He's heard it all before. You're a pastor. You're not supposed to get political. You shouldn't be talking about these issues, so just stay out of politics and stick to preaching the gospel. Life, marriage, sexuality, borders, ethnicity, these things aren't political. They're biblical. God's Word has much to say about the culture we're living in. This is Our Watch with Tim Thompson. Well, good Sunday morning to you. I am Pastor Tim Thompson, Senior Pastor of 412 Church in the Temecula Valley, and I'm so grateful to have you with us on this Sunday morning. As always, I'm here with my co-host, Jake Porter, the Youth Pastor at 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Pastor Jake, always good to be with you. Yep, always good to be here. It's always good to uh, get into God's Word with you and and talk about the various issues that affect our culture. And, and one of the things that you and I have been doing over the last several months is talking to our audience about the sin that's in our culture and exposing it, you know, exposing what's happening. And and we're called to be the light of the world, and light is a revealing agent. It shows the wickedness that's in the darkness. That's our job, um, and that's what we're doing. But not only do we want to expose the sin, we also want to equip people. We yeah. want them to, okay, so here's how you deal with the sin, uh, whether it be in the life of somebody that you love or even in your own life. You want to know how to deal with these different sins. And today we're going to talk about another sin that's very, very prevalent. It's the sin of addiction to internal stimuli. We've already, on this program, we've talked about the sin to addiction of external stimuli. Yeah. So, you know, that that external stimuli is things like pornography, social media, uh, things that are outside our bodies, but we have an internal reaction and we become addicted to it. But mm-hmm. today we're, we're really shifting focus and saying, okay, now we're going to talk about the things that you actually take into your body physically, drugs, alcohol, things like even food, you know, you can become addicted to and become a glutton. But the, the idea is your body is become addicted to something. And what does God's word have to say about that? And I know you talked to the youth at 412 Church in Temecula Valley, and this was a topic that many of them say that, that this is a, a struggle, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially the, the last few years that we're coming out of, uh, how many people, you know, overdosed on substances? Right. How many people relied on that stuff and and went way too far? And that's increased dramatically, which we'll talk about. I know. Right. Um, and so, does that apply to the youth? Absolutely. It's it's very very prevalent. Right. Yeah. You you say that we're going to talk about it. We actually did. Pre- you and I both preached about this, and we're going to listen to a clip, uh, just a small portion of that message that we gave on that Sunday morning, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about it. So take a listen. It's an important topic for us because in 2020 alone, more than 93,000 Americans died of an overdose. 93,000 Americans died of an overdose last year alone. That is the most overdoses ever recorded in American history. More than 20 million American adults suffer from addiction every single year. And here, an article just came out yesterday talking about America's substance use crisis spiraling during the pandemic. This is what the article says. It says, the forced isolation, disruption to treatment, and resource demands created by the pandemic have set America back in its, effort, or in, yeah, in its efforts to end the opioid epidemic. The article goes on to say it's not just opioids. The use of other substances, particularly alcohol, increased over the last year and a half, and experts say this may lead to more people struggling with the addiction. People are struggling with addiction in America because we have turned from God and turned towards self. And there's this desire to please self. And you think about what took place over the last year. You look at what happened in 2020. And people asked me, why did you stay open? And I had various reasons, all biblical reasons, of why we stayed open. And one of them had to do with this topic today. You know, there's several things you cannot do online. One of those things is baptism. Of course, you can't baptize somebody online. I can't grab you and put you underwater and bring you back out, doing that in front of all your people. We can't baptize people unless you actually physically touch them. Six feet away just doesn't work. Okay, so there's, there's that. There's communion. You can't take from one bread. When we do communion, we pass it out. 
We all have one bread, one cup, and we all drink and eat at the same time. This is biblical. But a, another thing that I said, I said this quite frequently when people were asking me, why are you so concerned with staying open? And I said, you know, there are men and women that I know that struggle with alcohol abuse. They struggle with substance abuse. They have drug problems. And they come to the church, and they've been doing well, and they depend on the accountability of their brother or their sister at church. And I know this, that when I see somebody that I know they've been coming to the church and they've been struggling, I can see it written all over them if they've been falling back into their old ways. When you isolate someone at home, shut them off from their church, and the message of true hope because people are wanting hope in this time. They're, they're wanting stability and hope. And this has never changed, and it's always worked. So it is the most stable, hopeful thing that people can have. When you cut them off from the place that's truly delivering that message and the accountability that they have from their brothers and sisters in Christ, it's a recipe for what we had in America last year where we had the most ever recorded overdoses in our country. Most ever. Yeah, most ever. You know, what a sad state of affairs. You know, we're so worried about saving lives from this pandemic, and yet in the process we've got record numbers of overdoses. Yeah, created a, a whole new problem. Right. Out of something that could easily be avoided. Right, right. And, and you know, we, we know about this. Here we are. We're in Riverside County. Riverside County has had a massive spike in fentanyl. Um, we're, we're not even calling those overdoses anymore. This is outright murder. It's fentanyl poisoning because these these people who are taking this, they're not thinking they're taking fentanyl. They think they're taking Xanax or some other form yeah. of drug, mm -hmm. and yet it's just packed filled with fentanyl, and fentanyl is extremely deadly. Um, in fact, there's you know there's enough fentanyl in Riverside County that can kill the entire United States. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy to think about. Yeah, so um, so it's it's a huge issue, and we as Christians need to know how to objectively address this issue. Um, you know, we can't address it subjectively because it's not a subjective issue when it comes to what God has to say about it. God has a very objective view of this, you know, and, and it is God's Word that matters. And we have to look back in history and go, okay, what what have God's people gone through before how can we learn from that? We hear from that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It talks about God's people and how they were traveling and going to enter into the promised land. And that is one of the things that addiction to internal stimuli can do to us. It can hinder us from fully entering into God's promises. You know, and that that's that's a bad thing for a believer. In 1 Corinthians 10 verse 5, it said, it's talking about how they had crossed through the sea and how they've been guided all around. You know, there's the pillar of fire by night, the cloud by day. And um, it says in verse 5, it says, but with most of them, God was not well pleased for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. And the idea here is that, that most of the people didn't enter into God's promises. They didn't enter in. And why is it that they didn't enter in? Because they were so consumed with fulfilling the lust of their flesh. Yeah. And, and that that's going on all around us. Yeah. Yeah. How often do you see that where people, you know, well, I, I guess I'll put it this way. You have to ask yourself, who is my God? Right. A am I following a lowercase g God or am I following the one true living God? Right. So who's it going to be? And what happens is people want to follow themselves or something else, and they're they're finding their their hope in a way in something else aside from God. Right. And and that's where a real problem lies. And and people are are falling into these things, and that's hindering them from being in a right relationship with the one true living God. Right. Yeah. I mean, the idea of Christianity is yeah, we're all sinners, and we all want to go to heaven. And if it were up to us and our own ability, we'd never make it there. So thankfully, Christ lived that life of perfection none of us could live. He suffered a death none of us want to suffer, and he was resurrected from the dead. And as we place our faith in him, he sets us free from sin, and, and we're no longer bound by the chains of slavery to sin anymore. And thank God for that. And, and 
we should be set free. Those who are in Christ are set free indeed. You know, we, we should be set free and no longer strive to fulfill the lust of the flesh. And we see in God's people that were traveling across the desert and never made it into the promises, we see a we see an example that is set. In fact, that's what it says in verse 6 of 1 Corinthians 7, that these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. They they just they wanted to be satisfied. They they wanted to be able to 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 feel like that this intense craving that they have was satisfied. And Numbers chapter 11 talks about this group of people. It says that the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving so that the children of Israel also wept again and said, who will give us meat to eat? We remember the uh, fish we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. Is there nothing at all except this manna before our eyes? It's like, in their in their eyes, it was the provisions of God are not good enough. I'd rather go back into slavery. I want my flesh fulfilled, satisfied. Yeah, yeah. We see that in in so many other ways today. You yeah. know, in, in a different perspective, where where people aren't satisfied with the number in their bank account, or people aren't satisfied with with the the basic things that God has provided them with. Right. You know, and they're like, oh, I want more. I want more. I want more. And it's this this culture that we've been brought up in where we want to continue to fill ourselves up with more. Right. But is is that what God wants you to have? Is that what God has provided for you? And what right. he has provided for you, what does he want you to do with that? Right. You know, what where does God actually want you? You know, these right. are questions that you Well, he ask wants yourself. us he wants us at the point where he is God. That yeah. that he is on the alt, he, he's on the temp, you know, in our hearts, he's at the top and our hearts are worshiping him, not making idols out of other things. And our our scripture today, First Corinthians 10, has more to say about that. We're going to talk about that in just a moment, but first we're going to take just a quick break and listen to this word from our sponsor. We are in a free speech war. With big tech, Biden is going after independent news that doesn't lockstep with them on COVID, shots, adverse effects, and early treatment. If you value Valley News' award-winning, unbiased journalism and community coverage without a left slant, please support us by going to myvalleynews.com forward slash subscribe and sign up for $5 a month. We can do this. Well, hey, welcome back to Our Watch with Tim Thompson. I am your host, Tim Thompson, pastor of the uh, 412 Church in Temecula Valley. I'm here with Jake Porter. He is the youth pastor at 412 Church, Temecula Valley. Glad you're with me. Yep, glad to be here. We uh, we left off before the break there talking about the fact that God wants to be the number one. Why? Because he deserves to be number one. He is God, and we aren't supposed to make idols out of other things. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10 says, Do not become idolaters as were some of them. Now, we're talking about the people wandering around in the desert. We're talking about people who wanted their, their the lust of their flesh satisfied. And it goes on to say, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor, verse 8, let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Now, that, that part where it says they rose up and they they rose up to play. This is a really polite way of saying that they indulged in pagan revelry. And we've talked about revelry. This is wild partying with drugs and alcohol and sex. And this is what God's people were doing because they wanted to satisfy the lust of their flesh. They made a God out of a little G God. And it's just not supposed to happen with God's people. We're supposed to have control, you know, self-control. It's one of the fruits of the spirit in Galatians chapter five. We have self-control. And when we just yield to our flesh, we let we we let the lust of our flesh control us and we just have whatever it is that we want to put in ourselves to make us feel good, we give into that. We've made an an idol out of that thing and we're going to do the same thing these people did. And and like we said, they they didn't enter into the promises of God. They didn't fully enter it. And also not only that, but now they're they're taking God's spiritual blessings for granted. Mm-hmm. And that's never a good thing either. No, not at all. I mean, God's provided so much and blessed all of us for the most part with a, with an incredible amount. You know, you you look at where we live in America and in for us Southern California, you know, or if you're in America by large, you're you're far wealthier than the whole world as 
as a whole, when you look at it from a, a, a big perspective, how many people are, are living out there that don't have food and water as readily accessible as we do? How many people out there don't have, they, they don't even eat anywhere close to the amount of meals that we do, where they don't have the basic things that we kind of have readily available all over the place. And, and that's a huge blessing that we have from God. But there's, there's times where even those kind of things are taken for granted, where people don't even realize or appreciate those blessings. And same thing in this situation, where it's like they're not understanding the spiritual blessings that they were receiving from God, and instead they want to follow their own, their own internal desires, their own selfish desires, and worship themselves in a way, rather right. than worshiping God. Right. Yeah, they truly are putting self before God. And, and we've even talked about that. That is the very point of Satanism. Yeah, is is putting self before God, you know, and and uh, goes on in verse eleven to say something it already kind of said, but it says that these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition, upon whom uh, the ends of the ages have come. So this is there for us to learn from. We need to learn from other people's mistakes. You know, I've as as a young man growing up, I for some reason I I had to go through the school of hard knocks. Like I had to make mistakes. And, and I had to learn from those mistakes, and I have regrets from those mistakes. And, man, the, the older I get, the more I'm like, I don't want to do that anymore. I yeah. want to start learning from other people's mistakes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the beautiful thing is God's Word says there's nothing new under the sun. Somebody's probably done it before. Somebody's been right. in the situation that you're in. Somebody struggled with the addiction you might have or whatever you're finding your identity in or whatever it is. Right. Somebody in God's Word's been there before. Right, yeah, it's funny because I think a lot of times people think all of these issues are new, like you said, and and they're not. Solomon said nothing new under the sun. You know, we we talked about pornography in an earlier segment, talking about external stimuli, this addiction to other things. And and you can go to this place called Bet Shean in Israel, and they've literally got pornography, like ancient pornography. It's still there in the stones. Like they've got this and it's been there for, for centuries and millennia now. And yeah, you know, we think, oh, somehow like pornography is a new issue. It's not a new issue. This has been going on a long time. Drug? Do people think drugs and substance abuse is like new? This is like a modern era thing? No. There has been pharma, what's called pharmakia, sorcery, including these types of chemicals. This has been going on for millennia. Yeah. Where people have become addicted to these substances. So it, there's nothing new, like you said, nothing new under the sun. These people had God's glory with them. They had God's love and his power. They had his sustaining provision. They had his presence, and they took all those things for granted. And here we are in America, and does America have God's glory? Well, we did. Yeah, we've, we've had his love. We've had his power. We've had his sustaining provision. We've had his presence. And what have we done as, as America? We've taken that for granted. And we've become addicted to all manner of things. Yeah. Yeah. America has lost sight of God. Mm -hmm. the, the very foundation and principles of what this country was built on, we've, our, our culture has completely lost sight of that. And, right. and we're not understanding the spiritual blessings that we could have should we follow Christ. Right. Yeah, I think it's important, though, for us also to remember that Yes, substance abuse, you know, and addiction to that—that's that is a sin. Uh, yes, it separates us from the the presence and the the promises of God, and it you know it'll cause us to take even when we do experience His blessings, it'll take us it'll cause us to take it for granted. But I want to make sure that our our listeners know this is addiction to substance abuse isn't something that God can't deliver us from. It is definitely, like any other sin, you could be delivered from it. Yeah. You know, when I was younger, I used to party. I used to do drugs. And, and the thing is, let's face it, it's fun. I mean, if everyone's honest, it is fun. If it wasn't fun, nobody would do it. The Bible itself says sin is pleasurable for a season. Yeah. And when that season's over, it's no longer pleasurable. In fact, when, when you and I preached on this, at church, we showed a video of this young girl who was strung out on on meth and heroin and fentanyl. Mm -hmm. And this poor girl, she she just said, she goes, yeah, yeah I used to have fun. I used to party. And and it, at first it was just this occasional recreational thing. And, and you just look at this poor girl and she's got scratches and open sores all over her face. And she's living 
out on the streets of Los Angeles and and you know she's got a mom somewhere that's just going, why won't my, my little girl come home? Yeah. You know, that, that season of it being pleasurable is over and she's still stuck with it. And it's a sad thing. And, and God can deliver people from that. I know when that season of my life was over, I'm like, I am sick and tired of this. You know, it was fun at first. I'm ready for this to be over. And I'm so grateful God delivered me from that type of sin. And and I know so many people have been delivered from that. And it says here in verse 12, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. That's important because there's a lot of people going, well, I would never do that. I would, I would I would never get addicted to that. You know how many people I know that that went their whole life without being addicted to substance and then they got prescribed oxycodone from their doctor and they thought, "Oh, you know, I'm I'm a Christian and it was a doctor, so it's okay." And next thing you know, they lost their house because of addiction to these types of prescribed medications. Yeah. And that's one thing that's real dangerous right now for your age group, especially and younger, that that what's happened is because there's been such a an addiction to these prescri- uh, prescribed medications, they're finding new ways to try to buy it. And we're living in a day and age where you can actually go on on Instagram and buy these prescription drugs. And most of the time, they're not actually prescription drugs. They're fake. They've yeah. got fentanyl in them, and kids are dying. Yeah. Yeah, you can buy this kind of stuff everywhere. I mean, you, you can go on Instagram. You can go on, you know, Snapchat's a, a huge thing where that is just, right. it is all over the place, seeking out where you can get drugs. You, you yeah. can get it anywhere. Yeah. But that's the thing is, is especially right now, is you don't know which of those are actually what you think you're getting and what is fentanyl or something else. Right. And, and that's what is so scary about, you know, people that are relying on these things is because they're like, okay, well, I have to have it. I have to have it. I've been on it, you know, and there it's this addiction that they have to to it but then what happens the day that they take one that's fentanyl right yeah and and i don't think people realize how dangerous this stuff really is there was uh something that happened right here in riverside county just recently where a man's daughter was overdosed she was poisoned by fentanyl and the father and they called paramedics and fire department and everything they're they're en route to show up and respond well meanwhile dad starts performing cpr on his child and when the first responders get there, he stepped out of the way. They took over. And the next thing you know, they look over, father died because the fentanyl was in his child and it got into him. He ingested it. Now he died. And it, it's really dangerous. Yeah. You know, it, and Satan loves what's going on here. Satan loves that he's, he's getting people held captive by this addiction. And so, again, it's, it's important for people to understand that this is not something that God can't relieve you from. God can God can help you. He can heal you. Um, verse 13, 1, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God, who is faithful, who will, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. God will give you a way of escape. He's going to give you deliverance from these things. And I know that that he's capable of doing that. He's done that in my life. He's done that in so many other people's lives that that I know. Um, you got you got 20 seconds. Final, final word here, Pastor Jake. <laughs> turn from addiction. Turn from whatever it is that you're being tempted with. Turn away from it and turn towards Christ. There That's what go. I encourage the students with. Yeah. Turn away from these things that, that the enemy wants you to be a part of and turn your life towards Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Jake, always a pleasure being with you. I want to thank all of you for tuning in and listening to our watch. We are going to uh, continue and finish, actually, next week, we're going to finish this whole entire series, Exposed and Equipped. So we hope you will join us next week right here on Our Watch with Tim Thompson. God bless you guys. This has been a production of Our Watch with Tim Thompson. We hope you are encouraged to engage the culture around you. We want to invite you to connect with Pastor Tim by going to the Connect page on ourwatch.com. That's O-U-R watch.com. Until next time, this is all of us at Our Watch reminding you to be bold, be strong, and to take back the public square.